The benefit of working with a doctor when you pl are planning to do donor sperm insemination is that the doctor can evaluate for potential infertility factors before you begin doing the donor sperm insemination. This is especially important in women who are 35 and older uh, because they may not have uh, a lot of time left and because they could potentially have infertility factors that could prevent them from getting pregnant. They could spend months doing insemination only to find out later that there was some reason why they couldn't get, have gotten pregnant with donor sperm insemination. And so it is always prudent to get evaluated before embarking on donor sperm insemination. There are differences between using donor sperm from a known donor and from a sperm bank. Um, the major ones are uh, medical issues, social issues, cost, as well as legal issues. Um, the medical issues are testing for, you know, infectious diseases, testing for genetic diseases. Um, cost is an issue. However, th I think that the two major ones uh, relate to social issues as well as legal issues because there really needs to be a discussion with a known donor about what the role of the known donor is going to be. Um, and there have been cases reported where there have been confusion about that. And that has led to subsequent uh, litigation regarding, uh, you know, custody of children and the role of a supposedly known sperm donor uh, in parenting that child. And so it's very important if somebody is using a known sperm donor to make sure that that is well discussed ahead of time and that there are legal contracts in place which spell out the expectations of what the role of that sperm donor is going to be. The difference between fresh sperm and frozen sperm is that frozen sperm is typically coming from a sperm bank and all of the FDA required testing for infectious diseases has been done, the sperm has been quarantined, and is ready for use. When fresh sperm is used, um, the testing for infectious diseases may or may not have been done. It is also potentially risky because a person can be infected with HIV, for example, and it may not show up in their testing for a few months after infection, and yet they could still be infectious. So when using fresh sperm, there is an element of risk involved. Reciprocal IVF is a new phenomenon that we have seen recently. A few years ago, we began being approached by young uh, lesbian couples who had not tried to attempt pregnancy with donor sperm insemination. And they came specifically because what they wanted to do was to have one woman provide the eggs and the other woman carry the pregnancy. And they felt that that would give the, both of them the opportunity to be emotionally and physically invested in having a child together. So we have the woman who's intending to provide the eggs go through the IVF procedure. The eggs are inseminated with sperm from the sperm donor of their choice. And the resulting embryo is transferred into the partner um, who then carries the pregnancy. Um, and in some cases, what they plan to do is come back a couple years later and reverse the roles so that the woman who originally carried the pregnancy will now provide the eggs. They typically will plan to use the same sperm donor and have the other woman carry the pregnancy the next time around.